Well, I'm Lightfoot. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, Strong Apparel for Errol Pierre. Errol, are you ready to do this? I am. All right, let's go. Errol is an author. He is a professor, highly motivated business executive. His newest book is The Way Up, Climbing the Corporate Mountain as a Professional of Color. Detailing It details the realistic challenges that black people face in today's workplace. Errol, I'm excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, why you do what you do. Sure, sure. So I'm born and raised in New York. And I stumbled into health insurance accidentally. Uh, it's, a, it's a crazy story. I was in the warehouse of a beauty supply store delivering shampoo bottles. And actually, someone asked me for my resume. And long and behold, I started a career in health insurance. Um, and the person who asked me for my resume was the chief operating officer. I had no idea at the time. Um, so got into healthcare. 20 years later, uh, I'm a health executive at a pretty big firm. And along the way, I've been thinking through uh, my path and the obstacles I've had to overcome and trying to think through all the lessons I've learned so I can share it with others, uh, whether that's people of color, women, LGBTQ, but all, all in the name of having other people being able to reach their dreams. I love it. So was it the way you were carrying the box of shampoo bottles, Errol? <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. Um, the warehouse was so boring and I was a junior in college. And so I actually started reading the back of the bottles and knew all of the ingredients for everything. So I, I delivered some boxes and the owner of the store was like, I'm looking for a shampoo that doesn't have lower sulfate. This is one of the big detergents. And I actually knew, I was like, I had that in my truck. I'll be right back. And the COO saw that. She's like, you do more than just stock boxes. You have to. And I was like, I'm a you know junior in college. She's like, send me your resume. And so I graduated from <laughs> beauty supply warehouse to my first internship in health insurance. That's awesome. Yeah. How do you look back on that experience now? Yeah. I mean, one of the chapters in the book I talk about is every single day you're interviewing for your next opportunity. So never take it for granted who you meet. Sometimes you might be having a bad day and you won't say hello in the elevator. That hello could be someone that can change your life. Uh, so you're constantly putting your best foot forward. Uh, when I write an email, I just assume it's going to get forwarded to the CEO. So I'm never curt. And uh, I realize people don't remember who was the smartest person in the room, but they definitely remember who how someone made them feel. And so those are sort of the lessons I, I take with every day. It's such an important thing that how we present ourselves in the world matters. Absolutely. And easy to forget. And <clears throat> I love what you just said that you think about every email that you send is going to make its way to the CEO. I've never thought about it like that. That's super powerful. Yeah. You know, it happens. These long forwards get happen and people scroll all the way to the bottom and they see your name. And that's why I said, you never know who's watching you, right? You always have to have your best foot forward. Uh, and then think about, I have a phrase that I say, um, have the courage to make 1 million mistakes, but the wisdom not to make the same mistake 1 million times. And that sort of teaches you, you got to try new things, get outside of your comfort zone. You will make mistakes, but you'll learn from them. And as long as they're not the same mistake a million times, it's new learnings, right? So I, I like to, you know, sort of have that also in the back of my head. Yeah, I love that. That's also super powerful. So you were you 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 were in college, just obviously working this job, delivering uh, you know boxes or whatever. Just I, I assume kind of to make money. And what what was the career path that you sort of sort of thought that you were going to go down? Yeah, so you know I entered into entry level role. I had no idea what health insurance was. Um, growing up, both my parents were immigrants from Haiti, a very poor country in the Caribbean. Um, and so growing up, I didn't actually have the most comprehensive health insurance. And now I'm working at a health insurer. So I really was wanted to know why some people have access to health care and why other people didn't. And that just led me down the rabbit hole of trying to understand um, coverage in America, health insurance, and everything like that. Um, ended up going back to grad school. For health policy, financial management. Um, every two to three years, I was getting promoted at my company, which was great. And I think the defining moment for me was um, when my CEO 
asked me a very honest question about a situation at work. And I kind of had two paths, right? It's like, I can say what I think he wants to hear. And this is, you know, the emperor's new clothing type of uh, analogy and just say, yeah, you look great. You know, whatever, you know, say something positive or actually tell the truth. And I don't know what, uh, maybe it was a coffee <laughs> that morning, but uh, I gave him some sober truth about the project, uh, which he did not want to hear, but he actually was thankful that someone told him. And he said, you know, at the top, everyone lies to you. They just tell you what you want to hear. And he's like, I, I'm sure it took courage to tell the truth. And in that moment, um, you know, I think that was what spearheaded me to becoming his chief of staff. So that was a big promotion for me and never look back. After that, I knew I wanted to be um, run run a company or be uh, running a business unit. And from there, you know, through mentorship, sponsorship, um, really dedicating myself and really focusing on my goals, I was able to keep moving up. Your self image when 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 you were growing up you mentioned, you know, you come from uh, your parents came from Haiti, a very very poor country different than the United States. And then you are growing up in the biggest city and the best city in the world. And, and, and you're seeing all kinds of different people, but did you think that you could be in the leadership position in the big job that you have today? How did that evolve? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I didn't. And um, there's a phrase that a lot of, a lot of people say, which is uh, if you see it, you can be it. And I had to see other individuals that were at that level just to understand the possibility that's why i think internships are so important because even if you do an internship and you find out you hate it you know you're like i want to be a lawyer you intern at a law firm and you're like i don't like this that's actually great because at least you know now versus after years and years of school and debt right so um i did not see it my parents were blue collar workers uh, my dad washed dishes in a nursing home. My mom cleaned homes. My dad ended up starting his own um, small business. So I knew blue collar, you know, values like work hard, work ethic, keep your head down, don't make noise, just do what you got to do, be polite. Uh, then I went into the corporate space and it's a total different world. Um, there, if you keep your head down, don't make noise and don't talk to the senior leaders, you stay in the same place. You actually have to speak up. You have to raise your hand and ask for projects. You have to introduce yourself to senior folks. Uh, so that change uh, was what led me down the path, but I would not have been able to do it without mentorship. Um, and then being able to see it, if I didn't witness it, I wouldn't even know it was possible. So I, I, I totally think exposure definitely changes the trajectory of a lot of people. Yeah. <clears throat> I could certainly point to different times in my life where somebody I, I got to have a conversation with somebody and realized this person's not dissimilar to me, but more importantly, I had people sort of put their arm around me and say, Hey, you, I, I see this in you. And I was like, Oh, I didn't even see that in myself. Yeah. It's powerful. So my first mentor, his name is Jeff Grayling, similar situation. I was a uh, entry level, probably 22 years old. We were on a big account that we're trying to sell our products to. And he actually invited me to the big meeting where our CEO was going to be there, their CEO was going to be there. This was a major Fortune 50 company. And it was a, probably a three-hour meeting. We're going through all these different datas and, and uh, formulas and charts and graphs. And there was one question I could answer. And this was about uh, the, the, the network of physicians that we're going to sell to them. Um, and he looked around the room when the question was asked. He's like, Errol, can you uh, answer that question? And... Um, I froze, had butterflies. I answered the question, but it was so, I was so nervous. Like I remember just trembling. My, my hands were shaking. And after the meeting, he's like, buddy, you did a great job. I was like, you knew the answer. Why did you call on me? He's like, because I knew you would answer. I knew you were good. You know, I knew you, I knew you got it. You, you've been, that's like literally what you've been working on for the last two weeks. So I didn't know the answer. Those are the opportunities that change your career because the next time I was in the boardroom, I had less butterflies. The next time I knew an answer, I was less scared to raise my hand and speak up. And so these are the types of opportunities that the mentorship really brings to you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate all of it. I appreciate being in the situation where I was absolutely terrified when called upon <laughs> and stumbling through my words, but it sounds like you did a great job. So appreciating the 
the importance, maybe necessity of seeing these people and being able to interact with them to, to, to realize that I'm capable of doing what they're doing, of having a mentor to help you along and guide and sort of shepherd your progress. Is it, is it a function of I'm going to put myself in position to have a mentor by working really hard and going above and beyond or, and I should proactively seek one out? Definitely an and versus an or. Uh, sometimes what I've learned, and I do mentor many um, employees of color uh, through the different work I do, sometimes there's a nervousness to say what you want out loud. And if you're scared to say it out loud, then how could you ever have the confidence to do it? And so uh, if you are working with someone and there's something about them that resonates with you and you can't put your finger on it, either they remind you of yourself or they're so bold, you're just taken aback by how confident they are. One of the two. But if you feel that in someone else, definitely that could be someone that's your mentor. And it doesn't have to be so official. I think people get really, you know, wound up around how do I get a mentor? First, start out by introducing yourself. Say hello. Um, then compliment them because something about them resonated. So say, you know, in that meeting, I, I love what you said. Uh, it was a powerful statement. I would love to find out about your background and how you got to where you got to. 15-minute coffee, right? If it's virtual, have a 15-minute virtual coffee meeting and get to know them. They're going to tell you about themselves. Usually people will say yes to a 15 minute meeting, right? If they say no, you don't want them as a mentor anyway. <laughs> and uh, you start getting to know them. Whatever they share with you that resonated, send a thank you email. And also as you read articles or podcasts, if there's ever a, a subject that included in the, your conversation, send them that too. Hey, you know, I, I read this article in New York Times. It reminded me of our conversation. And those small um, steps build an organic relationship. And maybe it turns into another 15 minute conversation, could be 30 minutes, start to share what you want to do. You know, a lot. I, I definitely, if I could be in your position, that'd be amazing. Um, how did you do it? Did you always knew you wanted to be in that spot? What were some of the hurdles you faced? It can happen organically. And I think sometimes we get so nervous. We're like, can you be my mentor? And the person's like, okay. And then we don't know what to do after that. Like you have to set the agenda. You have to make the time to meet with them. And then you have to really cherish the, their time because they're taking time out of their day to help you. And as long as you do that, it, the, the love will be reciprocated. A lot of great stuff. It, 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 it is hard to say out loud what, what, what we want a lot of the time. And particularly if we've never done it. And I imagine that your experience is that it got a lot easier once you started doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Like, so manager is the best conundrum in the workplace. Um, you apply to be a manager, but you've never been one before. So you don't have the experience. So how do you get the experience? By becoming a manager. And it's this really weird circle, right? But there's managers that exist. So someone hired someone that didn't have experience. <laughs> Why? There was a relationship that developed way before they applied for the role. And that's what I always share with folks. The applying for the role cannot be the first time you're meeting someone. You should, and we I mean, have so much technology now. You can find them on LinkedIn. You could say, I see this role was posted online. I'd love to find out more about it before I apply to see if I'm ready for it. I think someone would be taken aback to say, wow, not just 3,000 resumes, but actually reached out to see if they should apply or not. You know, you're start starting to get to know someone. Um, another thing is you say, while I haven't had managerial experience in the traditional sense, here are projects where I've actually had to show managerial characteristics and traits. I've led a project. I've been the lead on this. I've been the lead on that. So I haven't had it as a title, but I've been working as a manager for the last three years. You know, those type of things are very helpful. So yes, it is possible. You just have to be strategic and very intentional about it. I love that word intentional for sure. Um, talked about how the people that say, no, I'm not going to have a 15 minute meeting with you are probably not the kind of people that are going to be a successful mentor or a rewarding experience for anyone. Um, so I appreciate that. So find people that are interested in helping. And 
there's not necessarily a playbook for mentorship. And here are the steps that you follow. So me, in this example, somebody I'm asking somebody to take time to potentially mentor me. I need to be responsible for setting that agenda. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. So I always say to be a good mentee, it takes time. This is chapter six in the book. And time is an acronym, T-I-M-E. The T is for trust. You have to build trust to have a good relationship. So on the first date, you don't say, let's get married, right? <laughs> that 15 minute coffee meeting is just getting to know each other and it turns into some more meetings. So, you know, relax and don't think you need to have like the best relationship on the first two meetings. Take take time to build the trust. T is for trust. I is the word we talked about, in intentionality. So when you meet, they should know why you're meeting. I want to talk about how to get into this part of the of the company. I've never heard about how to get into a good grad program, and I'm choosing between two different schools. Uh, I uh, have been in the same role for five years, and I feel stuck, and I'm trying to figure out how to get out of it. Whatever the issue is, they should know about it before the call. It shouldn't be, okay, hey, how you doing? And then you're just laying on them what you want to talk to them about. Uh, by telling them in advance, they can prepare an answer for you. They can have some thought about it. And then two, they sh it shows that you're being judicious with their time. I don't want to waste your time. You only have 15 minutes. Here's what I want to say. Um, and in your first couple of meetings, it should be, I'd love to hear about you. Let me tell you about me. That opportunity, will you'll find opportunities where you have things in common. It's great to build a relationship based on something in common. Oh, you like that show too? Um, versus you're both strangers trying to solve something. So it, it, it really takes the trust and intentionality to build a relationship. M is for milestones. There should be a definition of success before you start. You're not just getting a friend. A mentor is not a friend. You're, you're, they're there for a specific reason. So whatever that milestone is, once you achieve it, take a step back and say, well, hey, we did it. Either it worked. Either I need more time to keep working on it, but there should be a milestone of here's what we're working towards. And then the E is evaluation. And I always say mentors are for a reason or a season. So you don't need to have a mentor forever. I've had mentors come in and out of my life. Sometimes we talk every day and then we don't talk for a couple of months and that's okay. And so the valuation period is after six months, nine months, you check in. And you say, this has been extremely helpful for me. Here's what I've learned in the past nine months. Has, has it been helpful for you? Uh, can, can you still offer more time? Because that gives an opportunity to say, hey, maybe our time is done. And that's that's okay. That's pretty okay. It doesn't matter if you say, well, I appreciate when you helped me through that season. And um, hey, best of luck to everything that you're going to pursue. And I'm always here if you ever want to keep in touch. So those are types of things I say, you know, T-I-M-E, ways to think through how to get a mentor and then keep a mentor. I love it. I, I, I love a good framework. So <laughs> that, 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 that definitely is. Do you think that, that you would have um, gotten to where you are today without mentors? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, the, the story I always like to tell is uh, Odysseus in the Odyssey. He goes to fight the Trojan war. He's going to be gone for a couple of years. And he's like, who's going to watch my son, Telemachus, while I'm gone? One person he chose to watch over his son while he was away at war was a man named Mentor. That's where the word mentor comes from. Hmm. And so, um, you know, it's a father-like, mother-like figure that's watching over you. It's kind of like your mom and dad, in a, in a sense, in a corporate setting, or a brother or an uncle. Uh, I would not have known the things that I... I know now without my mentor, um, navigating corporate America, there's so many unsaid things that you're supposed to do and you just don't know about them. If no one tells you, you find out when you trip over them. Uh, if you think of like uh, Mission Impossible, they have all those like uh, infrared lights when you're trying to, you know, steal the, 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 the painting. Sure. A mentor is like, Hey, here's where all the red infrared lights are. <laughs> crawl over here, walk over that, you know, that's the only way to make it through. It was a maze. It was a maze. I would have never made it through without strong mentors. Got it. I love it. 
Well, Errol, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you? Where can they get a, a copy of The Way Up, Climbing the Corporate Mountain, at, Mountain as a Professional of Color? Sure. So I am at errolpierre.com, E-R-R-O-L-P-I-E-R-R-E.com. Uh, you can get all the information about the book there. The Way Up, Climbing the Corporate Mountain as a Professional of Color is available anywhere books are sold. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, wherever, and independent bookstores support independent bookstores as well. So wherever you buy books, you can get it. Um, there's also a digital version too. And I'd love to talk to anyone that wants to reach out. Awesome. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show Errol your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Go to errolpierre.com, E-R-R-O-L-P-I-E-R-R-E. Dot com and pick up your copy of The Way Up, Climbing the Corporate Mountain as a Professional of Color and figure out how to avoid those tripwires and lasers and 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 all other challenges that uh, are, are hiding and preventing us from uh, getting where we want to go. Thanks again, Errol. Thank you. And until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.